Hey there, Jake Miller from the Educational Duct Tape Podcast here with you again. This is my third video about quizzes. In video number one, we talked about how to create a quizzes. In video number two, we talked about how to run it as a live quizzes. And here in video number three, we're going to talk about how to run it as an asynchronous or practice quizzes. Now, I will do some videos in the future, potentially two, about how to create a, a quizzes from a spreadsheet and about how to run a quizzes lesson and potentially how to create your own custom memes and quizzes. At this point, at the recording of this, there's these three videos, creating them, running them live, and running them asynchronously. So let's check it out. So first step is obviously to get into quizzes. Second is to find the quiz you want to administer. We could administer one that's available here on the main page, search or look at the predicted ones for us, you can see what it's predicted for me here, or come down here and look at them by content area. Now I'm going to use the one that I made in video one of this series. So to do that, I go over to my library. There it is here at the top. I click on it. I make any changes that I might need to if I need to for some reason, and I click on assign homework. Okay, now under assign homework, the first thing we see is when do you want this to be due? Okay, now the one thing, this is the most important thing to know about using quizzes asynchronously is the quizzes closes at that deadline. So I used to have a problem where I'd assign it to my students and I'd say this is due before class tomorrow and I'd set the deadline as whatever, 8.30 a.m. tomorrow and then I let my students do their work late and if they went in and tried to do it late, they'd say, Mr. Miller, the link doesn't work anymore. It says it's closed. So I make the deadline as far away as I can and just tell the kids, listen, I expect it to be done by tomorrow because after that deadline it literally is a deadline it's not a due date it's a deadline so keep that in mind in the free version you can only go two weeks out from the current date okay so i'll set it as due as april 23rd and i typically make it the end of the evening at 11 45 p.m so i'm getting as much time out of this as i can so four hour 14 days 10 hours and 36 minutes from now this will quit this will close now here's a trick I can come back in here tomorrow and extend that due date one day further. So I will pop back into the quizzes a couple times during the two weeks and extend the due date if I need to. And sometimes I'll even set a reminder on my phone, like in 10 days, remind me to extend the quizzes deadline. It's an option there. They'll let you go two weeks out from whatever date you're in there. So even though you can only go two weeks, you can extend it two weeks from whatever day you're in there. Okay. Uh, no deadline um, is an option that premium members have where they could say this is open forever. Notice that if it goes six months without use, it'll close, but otherwise they can make it no deadline. That's another bonus of that premium version. Okay. When I'm ready to assign, I can click this assign button, but I want to look at the stuff down below here first. I typically, you know, this is on my professional development account, but I typically in my school account, assign it to my classes. And here's why. Then I could see each kid listed there and I know who has and who has not taken the quizzes and it automatically posted to Google Classroom for me. However, if I'm posting it as a practice where I just want the kids to have access to a set of terms we're working on and I don't care if they all do it, then I don't assign it to a class. It just depends on if I want everybody to do it or not. The other thing to know is it automatically becomes an assignment in your LMS, at least in Google Classroom it does, and it automatically puts their grade into Google Classroom. So you may or may not want that to happen. Just something to know. I'm going to not do it for this one, but it's an option there that you have. Underneath there, we see the adaptive question bank mode, which I covered in, in briefly in videos one and two. The pro of the adaptive question bank mode is it gives different kids different questions and it forces them to repeat questions that they struggle with, which is wonderful. I'm not going to use it here because there's only nine questions in the quiz that I'm using and it wouldn't really work very well to be adaptive with just nine questions. However, if I had a quizzes that was all of my content from the whole school year or maybe from last school year as a review, I could make it adaptive and have it reappear each time it might be kind of nice so i'm gonna leave it off underneath here under participant attempts i normally leave it as unlimited gosh if my kids want to practice more than once great but you have the option of limiting it if you want to do i want them to see the answers during the activity again i like my kids to see it but you have the option of just telling them when they're right but not telling them the correct answer if they're wrong i like to leave it on and same thing, do I want them to see the answers afterwards or not? To me, that's another learning tool, so I leave that option on, but you can turn it off or just let them just see the questions. Below here, do you want them to get power-ups while they play? I, my kids like it, so I normally leave it on. You notice it defaults to off in asynchronous mode because the kids aren't playing simultaneously, but I leave it on. 
Do I want them to see the timer? Default timer sets the timer to be the times that were in the actual questions, or I could turn the timer off if I want to. There's also the test timer button, which is available just for premium members or super members, Paradise call, or I'm sorry, Quizzes calls them. Do I want the kids to see the leaderboard? I normally leave that on because the kids think it's fun, but it's going to tell them how other kids have performed. It's a little bit misleading because if they're the fourth kid to take it, they're going to feel like they're doing great. And then later, you know, later that night when the other 50 kids take it, maybe their score looks a little worse and they don't know it. That's okay. It's fun for them. And maybe they go back in later to check on how they did. It's an option if they want to. Do I want the questions to be shuffled and the answer, the answers to be shuffled? I normally leave those on. You may have time where your questions have an order that they go in. So obviously you would want to turn the question shuffling off in that case. Or maybe you have a question that you want to come last that says like, how did you feel about this quiz? Then obviously you better turn shuffling questions off. Do I want redemption questions? Again, I like this because it gives the kids a chance to review questions they struggled on. Do I want music on? I normally don't like the music, but the kids often like it, so I leave it on and they could turn it off themselves if they want to. Do I want them to see memes? I, I love memes for homework, especially, especially if they're customized memes that the teacher makes because then it's an extra connection. It was really great for remote learning because the kids weren't seeing their teachers as much, so it was nice for them to see them in quizzes this way. And then I click assign. And it gives me a few options of how I want to get this to my students. And I'll come back to this screen. Notice it's under reports. I'll come back to this, this screen to see student progress here. Okay, gives me a code that I can give to my kids or a link, or I can share to classroom or Twitter or Teams, or if you're premium, you could share to Canvas. And again, down here, I'll see all that data. Okay, so let's look at that link and let's try it out as a kid here. Notice the kid has the choice to have music on or off or memes on or off. Maybe if they don't think they're that funny or they want to go through it faster, they might turn them off. That's up to them. And they could turn on read aloud if they want to as they're going. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, let's, let's, let's leave the read aloud on for this one. Let's click start. It tells the kids when their deadline is. And again, I, I normally tell them to do it sooner than that deadline, but the, it closes on the deadline date. Down here at the bottom, you see that the kid can turn the music off if they want. They could change whether read alouds on or off. They could change the music up here as well, and they could pause where they're going if they want to. Down here, they would see who else has done it. If anybody else has done it, the student is the first time they're going, first person going through it, so they can't see it. So I'm gonna click start game. And you'll see it looks pretty much like a normal game, except they're just not playing at the same time as their classmates. Question. Which of the following are common ingredients in a taco? Option one, salsa. Option two, cheese. Option three, meat. Option four, M and M, MS. So you could hear that's what the read aloud sounds like. It's not the best read aloud voice that's out there, but if a student needs it, it's certainly better than nothing. I'm going to turn it off for the rest of the questions here. Oh, that actually prompts it to play it. If I pause, I could turn it off. So here's where I turn off read aloud is under pause. So I'm going to pause it so you guys don't have to hear that every time, but I wanted you to experience what the student experience looks like there. So let me go through and answer these correctly here. There's the rankings uh, that show all the other students who have taken it so far. Notice here, students got a, the student got a power up. Some of these power ups affect other students, which is weird in homework mode, but, but are great in game mode. That there erased one of my incorrect answers, which is nice. So it skews the score the students got, but the teachers still get accurate data too. Notice students can skip over those using the forward error if they're in a rush. And here's my redemption question I ended off with. So, so I missed two, so I see two options there to correct them. I'm gonna click on this one here. Uh, this was the quadratic formula. And all done. And now the kid's gonna see their score. They're gonna see the option to play again if they want to, which I love it if they do that. They see the option to find a new quiz. So if they wanna go find another quiz to study something or just for fun, they can. Down below here, they could see their score. Now it's important to note that it says that I got eight correct and one incorrect. Technically I got seven correct and two incorrect, but I had that redemption question. So it took that away from me. So it's just an important thing to note that when you're looking at your formative assessment data, you might see kids redoing things if you have redemption questions questions on. Let's wrap this up by looking at the teacher data here. So I'm just going to refresh this screen. 
and now I see that student there and see that he got 89% accurate, which again, it's showing that I retook that one. And when I look at the data for the student, I'll go full screen here. When I look at the data for the student, it does not say that I had to retake that one. Okay, so just know that that's in there, but I, I like the redemption questions. Here's one I missed. It just says that it's correct. I, I like the redemption questions. I think it's fine that it does it, but just know if you're looking for really concrete data, you might want to turn off because it lets them do a question twice. Totally up to you, and I want you to see the settings in there for that. Notice for the student also, one more thing to show you there, the student also has the option to look at them as flashcards. So the last thing they could do is click on study flashcards, and now I'll go through them as flashcards. It gives me the timer again, like it does in the regular mode. They could hit flip to see the back of the card, and they could hit next when they're ready. Flip, next, flip, next. And it goes through and gives them all of the questions out of it. You'll notice it skips over the one that was a poll and the one that was open response, okay? So I could uh, play it again if I want to as flashcards as well. Over here, if I refresh as the teacher, I still just see them playing it once. I can't see that they did the flashcards, but it's an option there for the students to do the flashcards. And also as a teacher, I can click flashcards and bring it up to play in front of the class if I want to on the big screen so we could practice it maybe before going through the actual assessment. So that's using quizzes in your classroom. Again, back in video one, we talked about how to set up your quizzes. In video two, we talked about how to run it synchronously live in class. In video three, right here, we talked about how to do it asynchronously as a practice assignment. In future videos that I'll come back and make in the future, I'll talk about how to make your assessment, make your quizzes, I should say, from a spreadsheet, how to do a quizzes lesson, and how to make your own customized memes. For now, though, thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any future videos.